Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Time Traveler's Handbook. Today we are going to be talking about Doctor Who Season 5, Episode 13, titled The Big Bang. Spoilers ahead. In this episode, it continues off from the last episode where the Doctor and his crew escape the Pandorica's trap and save the universe. This episode has probably the highest density of things to talk about out of the episodes that I've talked about so far, so I'm going to go through the major events that happen in the show and talk about each of them and what I found interesting about them in this episode. First, the TARDIS blowing up is the main cause of everything going on in this episode. We previously discussed that we don't know why it's happening at this time, and it's not really revealed how until later, but the TARDIS caused the cracks in time and by blowing up has erased the existence of the entire universe besides the Earth, the Moon, and the TARDIS, which is trapped continuously blowing up until the universe has collapsed. This has basically turned into the reality bomb discussed earlier and has removed all things from all time besides the Earth. We'll talk about the TARDIS continually blowing up a little bit later when we talk about what's happening on the inside. But next, there's a scene where the Doctor visits Rory in order to save himself and Amy, who Rory has just shot and killed in the previous episode. The version of the Doctor is from the future, having traveled back using River's Vortex Manipulator on the third time machine to tell Rory what to do. This seems like some sort of a paradox in the making, because if Rory hadn't have been told what to do, the Doctor would not have been saved, and thus he would not have been able to come back and tell Rory what to do. Additionally, the Doctor gives him his sonic screwdriver, which means that Rory is given the tools to do it and would not have been able to do it otherwise. Rory tells him about this later, and that's what makes the Doctor go and do this, and thus it turns out that this is some kind of a bootstrap paradox, where the piece of information that the Doctor conveyed to Rory is the bootstrapped piece of information. If you want to learn more about bootstrap paradoxes, I've talked about them a bit before in previous episodes, and we go more in depth on what they mean and the ramifications. After Rory saves the Doctor by opening the Pandorica with the future Doctor's sonic screwdriver, Amy is only saved by using the Pandorica to restore her. The Doctor travels forward in time to the point where the Pandorica will restore her, while Rory is stuck waiting by the Pandorica. Even though Rory is essentially immortal at this point because he's made of plastic, it's still an impressive feat of patience and waiting for him to stand at Amy's side for nearly 2,000 years. Immortality is a topic that we'll discuss on a later episode, but I think it's worth noting that the passage of time for Rory must have needed to be quick, or otherwise he would have had to have some sort of a mechanism in his mind for him to stay focused on the task at hand. Anyways, it's very admirable what he does here, and one of the best moments in the episode, honestly, to see him do this. Once Amy is restored in the future and everyone is back together, they discover that River is stuck in a time loop inside the TARDIS, which is still exploding and continues to try to escape with no avail. This is one of the very few cases of a time loop that we end up seeing in Doctor Who because they typically don't work with the type of universe that they've constructed, but the TARDIS must necessarily have some kind of a mechanism for saving River by wrapping time around on itself and keeping her alive. This is also to save the TARDIS from completely destroying itself. It's kind of a self-defense mechanism and River's mostly just caught in the middle of it. Fortunately, it's not too difficult for the Doctor to transport himself into the TARDIS, grab her and save her without falling victim to the time loop. And even with River gone, I believe the time loop perpetuates itself so that the TARDIS isn't destroyed while it's continuously exploding and wiping out everything in the universe. The Doctor has an easy time getting into the TARDIS because it's still a place in space, and the time loop is not happening kind of all at once from the perspective of everybody else. It's happening back to back forever in, instead. It's not a traditional kind of time loop, and maybe we'll talk about that more in the future when I dive more into time loops. Again, this episode has a lot in it, so I'm just trying to get through everything that I want to talk about. So, the entire universe has been wiped out of existence, and the plan to restart the universe once everyone has been saved and is back in the museum is to fly the Pandorica into the explosion. This using some 
kind of hazy world building about the Pandorica will basically cause the DNA of the universe to be forced back into existence, with the force of the TARDIS explosion being used up to remake everything, a second Big Bang as the Doctor calls it. The Doctor, of course, has to fly the Pandorica into the explosion in order for this to work, and by doing this, he is sent through a number of sequences back through the previous episodes of the show. What he sees from the perspective from the other side of the crack allows him to see him and his companions discovering the crack and inquiring of its mysteries. He makes it back to the beginning where he met Amelia and gives her a message on the night that they met. As he enters the crack for the last time, he's erased from existence along with the crack, and all that's left is a distant memory of him in Amelia's mind, which, of course, she recalls much later and brings him back to existence through the power of memory, which is a common motif in this season. I think that the most interesting thing about the end of the episode here is the going back and witnessing the events of your life from another perspective. Time travel shows that we have a unique opportunity to literally see someone's life flash before their eyes because they can go back and witness their life a second time from a different angle. This show does that really well in this moment, showing moments in the whole previous season that would indicate that he was there all along on the other side of the crack witnessing his final days and it makes watching those episodes again a little bit more interesting knowing that the mystery of the crack has been solved and knowing what is really going on with the crack in space and time that concludes our analysis of season five we're going to continue on to season six starting with the christmas special in between titled a christmas carol just a side note, today is the first day of March and I am so excited to have made it this far while still releasing an episode of content every single day. I'm very proud of how far I've made it so far and I, and I plan to continue making content for every single day for you to enjoy. So thank you for tuning in and thank you for enjoying these episodes and I hope to see you in the next one. As always, thank you for listening.